Well, happy St. Patrick's, everyone. It was quite a day today. Me and Sylvia had a great time uh, being part of the parade today, and it was absolutely packed. It was like so many people. The guys in the on the in the union that uh, had the float that I was playing on said they had never seen more people in all the years they've been putting on the parade. Sylvie had a terrific time. She looked terrific. I didn't get to see her, but I saw the videos after, and she was very pleased with herself at the end of it. She danced the entire six kilometers, so we're very proud of her. Anyway, so thanks again uh, for putting up with the video because of the St. Patrick's Day Parade, but it's a big thing here in Toronto, so I thought it was important that me and Sylv do it. And I had a great week, great gigs. Life really does seem to be coming back to normal to a certain extent, and I gotta say, I'm loving it. It's just great. It's so good to play with people and out in public. Okay, so today we're gonna do a little bit of work on the key of A. So we're gonna warm up with our G, like we usually do, and then we're gonna work on, and we'll do a couple of things in the key of G. We'll do the, uh, the Irish washerwoman tonight, and we'll do maybe, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, the Black Velvet Band. Uh, and that's a blast from the past, but I thought it would be great to re-look at it. And, uh, and certainly I have played it probably six times uh, so far since, uh, since playing gigs this week. It's a very popular one. So I thought we could do that Irish Washerwoman because we're working on these double stops and this kind of leaning back and forth to get the notes idea. And then we're going to get in on A. So let's spend 15 or 20 minutes working on G first. So let's do our scale and our arpeggio first of all. Ready, go. <laughs> okay even though we went a bit quicker but I'd say just to be sure to be sure let's do it again right away same thing ready go <laughs> So again, I hope that went all right, even at that tempo, and uh, we're getting stronger and stronger. Let's do a little bit of double stop work, get us ready for uh, the Irish washerwoman. Here we go. Ready, and... <laughs>
you do? Hopefully not too bad. Let's do it again right away. Ready? Go. cooking along there with the double stops <laughs> but like I said hopefully you got along okay with not too many mishaps I wouldn't mind let's just for practice let's just do the double stops with the down up up stopping in the middle okay uh, just in the interests of the tunes that we're doing so that's this here like that we'll do two of them on each set ready go So yeah, that's such a good exercise for your fine motor, for stopping and starting cleanly, especially on double stops. It makes it even more challenging, and if you can do a good job with the double stops than on the single string, it's going to be much easier and much handier. Okay, well that was a decent workout in the QG. So now let's try our Wild, no not Wild Rover, we did that last time, Black Velvet Band. of G. So you want to pull that out. I'm gonna, I'll pull out mine and get, up, get it up on the screen anyway. <clears throat> and another one that I did this weekend, um, it was on Friday uh, Friday night up in Barrie, a place called uh, Donnelly's in Barrie, was um, um, When Irish Eyes Are Smiling. And I'll tell you, the verse, the, the, the part, the, the chorus that everybody knows is one thing uh, but uh, the verse is quite complicated I'll tell you anyway it's one of the ones that took me by supply by surprise because uh, um, you know it's I haven't played it in so long and then uh, when we did do it it was kind of fast and furious with the key changes there in the in the uh, not the key changes, sorry, the uh, the chord changes. There, there's a lot. Anyway, okay, so Black Velvet Band. A one, two, three, one, two.
hopefully that wasn't too fast. I realize it's been a while since we did, so that might have been cooking along. Uh, so why don't we try it a little bit fat? Uh, sorry, try it a little bit slower. See how it goes. So that would be. Let's try it maybe somewhere in the, like this. Like that. I'll count you in. Oh, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, so hopefully everybody's warmed up with Black Velvet Band there, making it work okay. And uh, maybe we'll try one more time in case there was anything that didn't work or anything you missed. And I'm going to put loads of double stops in this time. Now, you don't have to, but it'd be great for you to get some ideas from um, what I'm about to do. So let's do it one more time. Same speed. You know, this is not a song that has to go fast. So the same speed. And we'll uh, and I'll put I'll dress it up a little bit and see what see what happens here. A one, two, three, one, two. dressed up black velvet band now let's see about the old irish washerwoman eh so let's see now the old the irish washerwoman okay so irish washerwoman i'm gonna we're gonna try it first uh tempo we're gonna try it at is 50 all right so this the tempo for 50 is this here ready go <laughs> That's the tempo. So get yourself ready. <clears throat> we're going to do it at that tempo and we're going to do it three times for the practice. Okay. The third time I might put a little push on you because the next tempo we're going to do is 60. 
So I might put a little push on you just to get you closer to that mark and then we'll try 60. But right now, three times, two times at 50. The last time I'll push you and then we'll try it at 60. I'll count you in. Uh, one, two, three, and... push uh, after the second uh, 50 okay and hopefully you hung in okay for that and didn't uh, bother you too much and now just take a little breather and roll them out roll out them shoulders and we're going to try it up at 60 okay and let's do the three times with this one too get you know give, give you more opportunities to get it so three times at 60 I'll count you in. One, two, three, and...
Monster! So that was more like 66, 67 <clears throat> is what that last tempo was. So if you had success, then that is good. For 66, that's a big jump from when we started. And keep it up. We are gradually encroaching to the nice speed. And I don't know if you noticed that even at 66, I was starting to feel a bit of a groove there. I was kind of going with it, feeling it. So it's getting there. It's going to get there. So keep practicing it at the uh, at the 50 or whatever it was that's actually definitely working. Keep practicing at that tempo. And then we will keep speeding it up until we get this thing up to like 75 or even 80. would be just great. So, so keep at the Irish washer roll and don't let up on her, that's for sure. Okay, so now that's all of our key of G stuff and getting smoother hopefully all the time and nice to revisit the Black Velvet Band as well. And so like I said there last week, I was saying that we're going to do lots of work today on the key of A and the arpeggios involved in the key of A. Uh, sorry, the double stops using the arpeggios. So let's do some good work on that. And I'll just review what they are. But first of all, let's just uh, play up and down that A major scale nice and slow. I'll keep my tuner on here. And we'll have a good crack at this now. <clears throat> Of course, playing outside today is not ideal, uh, although it was beautiful. Thank God. My, when we got down there, it was a bit cold and a bit windy and a bit of, uh, bit of uh, wetness in the air, but... Uh, by the time noon hit, the sun came out, and it was just gorgeous. And Ina, my friend Ina, even had to take off her coat. Uh, but still, certainly still too cold for a fiddle. So, the you know, I'm suffering a little bit now. My fiddle's suffering a little bit because of that, uh, because of that drastic change in temperature there. And I'm just having to fight the intonation a slight bit. Looks good. See, but... Very important to make sure your fiddle's as in tune as you guys can get it. I know it's not easy to tune your violin and get it bang on, but if it's possible to get it as close to bang on as possible, then you're going to have a lot easier time with these double stops, you know, or any of the intonation work, of course, you know. But with the double stops, it's especially important because you want at least your open strings to be reliable reference, for sure. Now, here's your low A. <laughs> can tune that. Now we'll do a very slow scale. Ready, go.
on the money there. Hopefully yours was too. I don't think we should trust ourselves though. I think we should do it again straight away exactly the same speed. Here it is. Ready to tune it and let's do it. Ready, go. just as good or if not better um, now let's try the arpeggio same tempo uh, exactly the same here it is to two low A ready first attempt at the low A was quite sharp. I had to bring it down. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, definitely that's the case. <laughs> Let's do it again. Ready, go. better for me <laughs> hopefully it was for you too let's pick up the pace let's do scale and then arpeggio just a slight bit faster see if it still stays in and then we're going to get to those double stops so just a little bit faster scale first already gone shouldn't say go out start out on me there so I'd like to do the whole thing one more time same speed ready go
is strengthening up there so that we can get ready and work on our double stops. And remember that whatever you have to do to get the C sharp and G sharp in tune, for me, it's an entirely flat fingered, hard part of my finger. See if you can see that mark. See that mark on my third finger? That's the part of my third finger I use to do those sharp notes there, that little line there. It's the corner, and it's a reliable spot for me, as long as I have the right pressure. Okay, so now we're going to try some double stops with the key of A. I'm going to go over them again. Get them up on my screen here so I don't make up new ones. Oh, so nice to see so many people out today feeling comfortable and and uh, having fun outside on a St. Patrick's Day. So nice. And it, it was such a beautiful day, too. So it really contributed to the to the uh, fun atmosphere today. And, and uh, the tunes were just great with Ina. She has some great ones. She reminded me of many. And there's one that we might do if we ever put, do get to the key of C, which I hope we do. There's a little polka that she plays, and I just love it. Two phrases total, uh, but lovely little tune. And in the key of C, which we have not encroached on yet, uh, it's one of the natural keys without the sharp notes, which are not exactly home territory for us, but it would be extremely good to take a look at the key of C at some point or another. Anyway, A major double stops. The first one, G1, D1. It's the fifth, using one finger. And then we got the third, D1, G3. Okay, then we got the fourth, D1, open A. Back to a fifth, open E, open A. I call it the opens. That's when I say the opens. And then we got A2, open E. That's a third. And then we got open E, open A again. Uh, the opens, that's a fifth. And then we got an octave, E3, open A. Okay, and then it just reverses on the way down. The opens again, E and A open. A2 open E, the opens, E and A, open A, D1, D1 to G3 there, and finishing off with the fifth again, the one finger on the G and the D string. Like that. So get that finger down. And then chest it on the other string. I'm good. finger is twisted slightly so that the uh, this side of it is a little bit further ahead on the D string than on the G string and I don't have full pressure on the D string either if I did it would be a very sharp E so I put all the pressure on that A and then I kind of mitigate the E using pressure until I get it in tune. You see that? That's how I do that. So I'll put all the pressure on the A and lean over until we get them both. Here, I'll show you. See how I did that? So just lean it over until I get the right pressure for the E. So now that you've got that set, let's have a couple of them. Ready? Go.
spin. A major double stops. Now you can hear that that G3 and D1 combo is hard. And just to let you know how, how I deal with it, uh, again, I don't use a lot of finger pressure for the E, but I do use quite a lot to get that C sharp in tune. So let's do it again, guys. Same thing. There you go, so you can tune it. Just keep my tuner on too, to keep me honest. Here we go, ready, slow. challenges for each one again so with the first one like i said full full pressure on the g3 and mitigating the pressure on the d1 okay um well actually I, I went over the first one there so a little bit sharper on the d but less pressure okay uh and the next one is the all the pressure on the three and not much on the one I'm trying to leave the one from where it was before when you did the fifth there leave it there Leave it there again to play the fourth. So you're just leaving it there. You're getting it out of the way of the A string. You're playing that open A and e, a D1, which is an E, together. The opens are the opens, but you got to watch your bow. So easy to... <laughs> Make yourself go flat. So a nice, gentle bow. It's lovely, okay? The third, A2 open E. Unfortunately, so A2 is not hard. There she is. And you play with the E. It's nice. See that? The only problem with it is that it never really fits sound totally in tune. Because it's a third. So it still has this little modulation. You just got to get to know what it should sound like. And then be careful with your opens. That was nice. And then this one. I really recommend kind of bringing in the pressure. Your bow and you can hear it coming to tune. Octaves are easy to do that with, okay? So those are the challenges which eat with each one. Let's do one more round of them and see how you get along. Still slow. Ready and stops it's a challenge for sure but hopefully that went okay for you all right now without further ado i think we should get to the devil's dream because now the last going off of devil's dream that i saw there on our video we're going very slow i've it's at uh approximately 
30 or even slower on the next one. I'll show you. One, two, three. So I would like to try it two times at uh, that nice 30, very slow, very, very slow. Uh, and, and well, let's just do it three times. So, so roll out your shoulders to pause the video, do some yoga, whatever you got to do to get through three times of Devil's Dream at 30 uh, for the practice. Okay, now I might push you the third time, but for now, let's just go right to that 30 and see if we can make it work. Now, I'm going to get the music up so I don't confuse anybody because I know I'm doing... A little bit of a version. And here it is. Okay. All right. So I'm going to count you in now. One, two, three, go.
God, that doesn't work out. So that was starting off at 30, and I think we got up to about 40. Yeah, 40. 40 is where we ended up there. So take a little breather, and we're going to try it again, but this time we're going to try it at 45. Okay? I'm going to kind of push her up there to 45, and we're going to do it two times at 45. Count you, and this is what it's going to sound like, though. Now, remember, this tune is 90% string changes. So, if you're having trouble going fast, I almost guarantee that it's this here that's slowing you down rather than doing it like this, which would be very quick and easy, okay? So that's what you want to be conscious of. Use the doorway if you have. To. This is a great one to do in the doorway. Watch this. Now, I always say when you're using the doorway, you got to make sure you're not doing it in a weird way where you're reaching out for that isolation point. You got to try to stand as if you were normal. See that? If I move that too much, it's going to bump there. See that? So that's why that elbow is going to be kind of kept at a, at a, uh, on a leash there. chair doorway here for you guys to notice while I demonstrate. Now, you notice my elbow does have a tiny bit of movement, you know. It's usually just a reaction to this because, you know, you move your wrist like this and your elbow is going to move as a result. That's all that that is, though. I'm not using it to change strings. And it's the tiniest movement. If I did any more, I'd get a bump. So it's okay to have a little movement. You just want to really try to keep it to a minimum. Okay, I'll count you in at 45. One, two, three.
right, so that was at uh, 45 is where we got that tonight, okay? So what we worked on tonight, we worked on our G. We did uh, the uh, bl uh, Black Velvet Band for a change. We did the Irish Washerwoman, got it a little faster. Hopefully you got along okay doing that. Then we worked a lot on the A major double stops. I can encourage you to do that. Go back and see the challenges where I show you the challenges involved in each one. And before you even start playing them this week, that's be a really good idea. Just to have a heads up of what's challenging for each set of double stops and spend lots of time on them. Don't forget your bowing patterns on the double stops. Very, very good to do. And then we worked on our uh, Devil's Dream and we got it to 45. Hopefully you didn't have a, very much trouble at 45. I think we could get her right up to like 60 in a couple of weeks here, over a couple of weeks. So that's what I encourage you to keep working on. And thanks again for putting up with the video. Um, I hope you got to see us. On the, apparently we were on the news uh, today, so I hope you got to see us, me and Sylvie. And uh, we'll see everybody on Sunday without fail at 10 in the morning. I will be here with bells on and a coffee in my hand. Okay, thanks again. Bye-bye.